What's going on you guys? This is Dimension Scott back at you once again with a brand new video and today I want to talk about five movies in my opinion that have gotten received certified fresh tomato scores you know on Rotten Tomatoes movies to me that I think are either okay fine meh good enough it was fine did it really live up to uh, all the praise and good responses that it was getting in my opinion I'm about to give you my point of view of these titles so let's begin before we get into today's video if you guys are brand new to my channel be sure to give this video a thumbs up comment down below subscribe for more videos if you like what you see you can also find me on facebook and instagram with the same name as usual dimension scott where i talk about all things physical media okay so i did the, i did a list kind of like this uh, about movies that I personally love that have like like Rotten, Rotten Tomato scores like Blade, Man of Steel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and plus more. So I want to get in some movies that are received so well that they have certified fresh scores on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So I don't know if I said this before, but just because a, a movie has a fresh Rotten Tomato score or even a, or even Rotten, you have to form your own opinion you don't have to take anybody else's word that really can go just about almost anything even if you enjoy a bad movie i know some people who probably like a movie that's probably bad but they enjoy bad movies we all enjoy some we all enjoy what we want we all have our point of view of things so um with all that in mind shall we begin and by the way this might be some of these might be some hot takes, so let's go. Okay, so I wanted to start at number five. At the top is going to be um, War for the Planet of the Apes. So this movie is titled War for the Planet of the Apes. I was like, oh, are we gonna get a huge war? Are we gonna get another a war with uh, with our apes, with like Caesar and uh, uh, the human, the, the villains, like the human villains and stuff like that, but um, the movie was so well received. It got a lot of praise. It was received so well. It was considered an awesome movie. One of the probably best trilogies in modern day. That thanks to uh, Matt Reeves directing this. But um, uh, for me, I was expecting a whole lot of action between the uh, the monkeys and the and the villains and and um, I haven't watched this movie in a very long time. So to me, was really what really disappointed me was. There was not a bunch of action. And I realized that Matt Reeves likes to focus on more story and acting than, than action. So um, maybe someday I'm going to give this movie a rewatch and see if I can change my expectations and see maybe I like this movie better. Number four is going to be 2022's The Batman, which is also a, a Matt Reeves directed movie. So like I was saying before, Matt Reeves is a director who likes to focus on story and acting, not action sequences. Now, this movie did a good job with being being a detective story, but um, there was not really no action, except for the Batmobile Highway or something chase sequence. And there was some realistic fist fighting, but uh, I don't think the fist fighting in this movie was not insanely mind blowing compared to what some of Zack Snyder's epic uh, action. And um, I guess I even like uh, Christopher Nolan's uh, action sequences and his Dark Knight trilogy. But uh, the Batman here, while I think it's a pretty good movie, um, there was just not a whole bunch of action. And it is really, it is almost three hours long, which I don't think it needed to be. So this movie was received like the best Batman movie and stuff. But uh, I never, ever thought that this movie was going to be a favorite Batman movie. So... Um, We'll see what happens with the Batman 2. I think we're still getting that. Number three is uh, an unpopular opinion. Guardians of the Galaxy, directed by James Gunn, who, which he is now taking over DC. So Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, for me personally, it's way over the top. And that's what James Gunn likes to uh, do with his, his movies and his kind of comic book movies. So I think Guardians of the Galaxy is over the top. Uh, some... 
I don't think the story all appealed to me that made me feel so connected with these characters like uh, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, and more in my opinion. So uh, James Gunn, it's just that his, I think his sense of humor did not appeal at all to me. So, mm, so I'm, I'm not the hugest fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. I think, I, I actually thoroughly enjoy Guardians 2. And even Guardians 3 more than this than the first one. So uh, the biggest thing I'm worried about with James Gunn taking over DC is just his over-the-top sense of humor that it can be hit or miss. At number two is also another directed James Gunn movie, which is his Suicide Squad. Um, it's quite fun. I'll give it that. Some people probably didn't like it because it was how bloody and cursing over-the-top again over-the-top sense of humor by James Gunn and so many people say it's the best DCU movie and so many people even compared this to the first one which I I would personally choose the first one over this movie in my opinion but the uh, the, the Suicide Squad can be somewhat fun um maybe if uh, maybe uh, I think John Cena can be a little over the top with his humor and um, it is bloody it is over-the-top bloody as hell and uh, it has this giant starfish, and uh, again, all that James Gunn over the top mess is just can be hit or miss. So I don't personally think this movie is as is not absolutely my absolute cup of tea to make it out to be the best DC movie or part of what the DCEU was. So um, this is this is what I'm really worried about. Please, I don't want to see all James Gunn. DC movies all over the top and stuff because that's just so hit or miss for me and number one is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming so um, at the time of this movie got released uh, it was so it was so praised so many people thought it was a breathtaker fresh air because a lot of people didn't like the amazing Spider-Man films especially the second one and uh, so Spider-Man Homecoming was just a breathtaker fresh air and uh, the prime of the MCU. But over the years, I was like, like, that was pretty decent. But uh, but come on, it wasn't the best Spider-Man movie. I That comes from me as a huge fan of the uh, of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire movies. And uh, I actually didn't mind the Amazing Spider-Man movies. And I know so many people despise Spider Amazing Spider-Man 2 due to uh, studio meddling and blah 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 but I still like the Amazing, the Amazing Spider-Man movies more than some people uh, but Spider-Man Homecoming was just nowhere near the greatest Spider-Man movie at the time that people made it out to be and I'm not even someone who really disliked the Amazing Spider-Man movies so Homecoming to me it's, it's actually one of my least favorite of the Spider-Man movies in that comparison of uh, Toby and Andrew and uh, I've grown a bit more appreciation about the Amazing Spider-Man films as well so Homecoming is I guess it's, it's still fine but I don't think it will, it will nowhere never be anywhere near a close favorite Spider-Man movie all right so there we have it guys what did you guys think of my list do you enjoy these movies do you think they're overrated do you think uh these movies are as good as you think they are that they're made it out to be are they do they really deserve to be fresh and stuff let me know down below if you enjoyed this video be sure you give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys later peace out